No. No. Hi everyone, this is Fabi here and in today's video I'd like to welcome you to my third setup tour on YouTube. Now, a lot of things have changed since 2012 when I did my first setup tour on YouTube, but one thing that remained the same is the location of my desk, which is basically in my bedroom. And especially now during COVID times, this is pretty unpleasant because it means that I'm spending most of my time in this room and there's also almost no separation between work and my after work life. Of course, I've also covered a lot of the products that I'm going to show you in separate videos, in review videos or unboxing videos. So I'm going to link those in the description down below and in a card which is going to pop up on the screen when I'm going to talk about those items. And I'm also going to put links to Amazon so you can buy each of these items. All right, so without further ado, let's start talking about all of the things that make my desk setup what it is. Okay, so the first thing we need to talk about is going to be the screen, because it's absolutely impossible to ignore it while looking at my setup. Some of you might have already heard me talk about this in my first impression and review video, so this won't come as a surprise, but I'm really happy with the monitor. The way you can multitask with it is just amazing, because you can work on something, you can have a window open in the middle, and then two windows open to the side, so you can have your Spotify to your left, maybe uh, a research tab on Safari to your right, it really opens up a whole new world of possibilities. So this Dell U4919DW, this 49 inch 32 by nine super ultra wide is really a great monitor. Another great thing about this Dell is the fact that it allows me to have a one cable setup. So as you can see over to the left, I only have one cable being plugged into my MacBook Pro and it can power multiple things because my monitor is basically a USB-C hub. All I have to do to switch between my Windows laptop and my MacBook is to unplug the USB-C cable from one laptop and plug it into the other and this allows me to carry all my accessories from one laptop to the other because they're basically going to stay connected no matter which laptop I have connected to my monitor. Talking about laptops, my main and personal laptop is a 2016 15-inch MacBook Pro. This is of course the first version with a touch bar and it's got many keyboard problems. But fortunately enough, Apple exchanged the keyboard, the battery and the touchpad and a few other things as part of the keyboard replacement program and this was really good news to me because my battery also started to swell and I just couldn't bring myself to pay the battery replacement fee because I just didn't think it was alright for a laptop this new because it's only like three and a half years old to have its battery swollen. My secondary laptop is my work provided 17 inch HP Windows laptop and I do like this laptop because of its large screen and because of the fact that most of the tools that I use as an engineer are natively available for Windows and most of them are not available for Mac. Of course if you're just a programmer this is not a problem, most IDEs, most text editors are cross-platform but for some specialized tools that electrical engineers and many other engineers need there's just no Mac or Linux versions and this is really a bummer but I'm not going to lie it is nice having two laptops because it means that if one is out of battery you can always use the other one if there's a tool that I like to use on Mac such as Final Cut I can use it on my Mac and if there's something that I want to use on my Windows laptop I can use it on my Windows laptop without any virtualization or boot camp. To make my life easier I've got this vertical stand which allows for both of my laptops to be seated at the same time and it's got silicone padding on the inside so that my laptops don't get scratched. It really is a lot better to have this than have my laptops just stay on the table because they accumulate dust and it's just a waste of space. I also have this other stand which is meant for only one laptop but this allows me to have my laptop open so I can basically have my screen connected to one laptop and then have the other laptop over to the side if I want to check some things on it as you can see in this example. Even though my monitor does have support for picture by picture and it has a KVM switch, I still like to have my laptop to the side sometimes, open up YouTube, start a video and then go on about working on my main monitor and just glimpsing over to my other laptop to the side to see what's going on in the YouTube video. If we move our attention to the upper side of my desk, we'll be able to see the 
mesh Wi-Fi system which powers all of the devices in my house. This Netgear Orbi system has one router and one satellite, so I've got a total of two access points which is really the ideal solution for my house because with only one access point I couldn't get coverage throughout the house. Unlike other mesh systems, the backhaul for the satellite is provided through a different band than the band that your devices use to communicate with the network. This means that your speeds are not going to be affected by the wireless backhaul, which is a great feature. Moving on to my desk accessories, I've got this phone stand from Ikea, which I like because I can also put my phone in landscape mode and watch videos. The only thing that I dislike about it really is the fact that if you keep your phone in portrait mode, it's kind of hard to exit out of apps because you have to swipe up from the bottom of the phone and the bottom of the phone is kind of stuck inside the dock. The next item is my 10 watt Belkin wireless charger, which doesn't get used as much as it should because heat is the biggest enemy of batteries and charging wireless generally leads to more heat being produced. Also, because I always charge overnight, the 5 watts that my wall charger provides is all I need. And the battery of the iPhone 11 Pro Max is already good enough that it easily lasts me a whole day. This chair has basically gotten mainstream, the IKEA Marcus chair, but I do appreciate its lumbar support. This is the leather version which looks better than the fabric version, but in the end I think the fabric version would be more comfortable. Though since the pandemic started I don't use these as much because I just travel way less often, my Audio-Technica ATH AR3BT Bluetooth headphones offer great sound quality for the price. The battery lasts a really long time, I never really felt the need for longer battery life and I do appreciate the auxiliary input. As I already mentioned in my everyday carry video, I use two phones on a daily basis. Apart from my main 11 Pro Max, I use this iPhone 6s for monitoring cell networks, which I do as a hobby. Back in March when the pandemic started, I found myself with a lot of free time on my hands, so as any reasonable person would have done, I bought myself a Bluetooth Xbox One controller to play GTA Online, and I have to tell you, it's been an absolute blast. As far as keyboards and mice go, the USB adapter for my Microsoft wireless mouse and keyboard is plugged into my monitor, which means that I can use these with both my Mac and my PC, depending on which one is plugged in. When I use my Mac though, I prefer to switch to my Apple Magic keyboard and mouse for the shortcuts and native command key. Something that comes in handy at the pool is my Bluetooth speaker. Even though it's old at this point, the JBL Flip 2 still does the job fine. If you're in the market for a Bluetooth speaker though, I'd recommend the JBL Flip 4 or 5 as they do sound much better and their battery life is absolutely superior. Over to the left side you can also see the microphone that I use to record my YouTube videos, the Blue Yeti Snowball. Last but not least, in a corner of my room that is mostly hidden, I keep my Hutu USB-C hub for my MacBook, my Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, which runs scripts throughout the day to scrape the web for certain information. Over to the right there's a Raspberry Pi with an OLED screen which shows me some information such as flights which are nearby, and then over to the left side we've got an ESP32 development board which is cheap, it can be programmed through the Arduino IDE, and it's got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Anyways, I hope you guys liked this video, if you did make sure to click the like button, subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. If you guys don't know, I'm doing this educational series on my channel named Embedded Systems Explained, so if you want to know more about embedded systems, microcontrollers, C programming, make sure to check out that series. It's going to be linked in the description down below. Anyways guys, thank you for watching and stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.